I know you guys were expecting budget edition on the last episode of Setup Wars, but I had to switch things around, so instead I'm doing it in this episode. Uh, moving forward, I'm gonna do it every other five episodes. So once again, episode 185, episode 195, and so on. But yeah, anyways, with that said, welcome to Setup Wars, episode 176, budget edition. Let the Setup Wars begin. Hey guys, so LG is hosting another event where they're giving out a couple of their ultra fine monitors as well as a few gift cards. You can win either a 24 inch 4K ultra fine monitor or their 27 inch 5K monitor. The ultra fine lineup is LG's premium lineup for productivity monitors with super accurate color performance and tons of connectivity, including Thunderbolt 3 support that can charge any compatible device up to 94 watts, making them the perfect companion to any Mac. The Ultrafine Monitors is the perfect solution to your workstation setup and all you guys have to do to enter is watch the campaign video and tell us your personal experience on using an external display with your Mac. Or you can post your response on either Instagram or Twitter with the following hashtags. If you guys are interested, make sure to check the description section for more info. Just so everyone is on the same page, the term budget in this episode means that the entire setup costs less than $1,500. Let's begin. Starting off the show, we have Rasmus from Finland and his gaming and editing setup featuring a 24 inch monitor from Asus and an ancient prehistoric 19 inch monitor from Samsung, which is used as a secondary display. I'm not sure what desk he's using, but it's definitely large enough to fit everything, including his PC. So I'm curious as to why he has it hanging from the desk like that. You could have easily made room for it if you put the prehistoric monitor on the other side. It looks like the desk is motorized, so the PC is somehow attached to it using two cables, it looks like. I really hope those are some strong cables because I'm getting anxiety just by looking at it. He did keep the surface of the desk fairly clean and I do like that he drilled a hole for the keyboard and mouse. Uh, he was actually very clever about it. So he took advantage of that by installing a multi-purpose sub to not only cover up the hole, but also make use of it. Well done. Now the microphone placement looks a bit too far from you. I'm not sure if you just keep it there when you're not using it, but I do recommend picking up a cheap boom arm for $12. That way you can mount it on the left side of your desk for convenience. You probably might have to pick up a USB extension cable so that it reaches your PC. I was gonna recommend a headphone anger for the Hydro gaming headset, but I guess the desk lamp works out better and you can save money at the same time. This is actually one of my favorite desks from Ikea because it does come with a net underneath, making cable management a breeze. The rest of the wires are covered using a white sleeve, so nicely done there. And finally, we've got the budget PC that he uses for editing, and it's got the Ryzen 5 2600, 16 gigs of RAM, and the GTX 1050 Ti. A decent budget setup to start off the show. Consider making those changes if you want to improve it, but thank you, Rasmus, for entering. Next up is Batu from Romania and his setup filled with lots of personality. I love that he lifted up his desk using a few capital legs, however I would have put them a little further in so that it's hidden from view, just like how you did on the right side of the table. Batu is using the Logitech G213 keyboard with a G203 mouse and even though he didn't manage those cables, he did a good job keeping the surface fairly organized. One thing I would do is route the headset wire towards the back instead of through the front. As far as cable management, I see what you did there, you cheeky person you, covering the back of the setup so I don't see any cables. Okay, I see you. Now the wall shelves you installed are a nice touch to add some collectibles on there instead of cluttering your desk. I mean, it's not a bad setup, especially when considering that this was your setup before. You made some nice upgrades, just work on the cable management. Well done and thank you for entering. This next setup from Chris almost didn't make the show because of the Nanoleaf panels, but it's still within the $1,500 budget. He uses this setup for gaming and homework, and he's actually got the same monitor I reviewed in my top gaming monitors under $200. He's also using the popular Red Dragon K55-2 Kumara keyboard and a CyberPower Elite gaming mouse with a matching mouse pad to stay consistent with the red and black theme. For audio, he's got the Logitech Z207 speakers and the HyperX Cloud Stinger headset hanging from underneath the desk. And while we're down here, let's take a look at the cable management. The rack seems to be doing most of the work, however, he did hook up a few things underneath the desk for easy access, like the SD card reader and his modem. I also love his dedication. He picked up a red Amazon Echo Spot and covered his PS4 in D-Brand skins to stick with the color scheme. 
So there's a lot of debating going on in the comment section of these episodes every time there's a skinned console. People are saying skinned consoles look tacky and then other people are saying it looks way better than not having a skin. So we're gonna settle this once and for all guys. I'm leaving a straw poll link down below. Click on it and vote. Do you think skinned consoles look better or naked consoles? The PC priming the setup is a pre-built. Let's get an F in chat boys. I'm just kidding, you're using a uh, Dragon Ball Super wallpaper, so I'll give you a pass. It's got a Ryzen 5 2600 and an RX 580. I personally think it did an awesome job putting all of this together while staying true to the red and black color scheme. Thanks for entering. At number four is Jarek's super clean setup he uses for gaming, school, and YouTube. He's got a 24 inch monitor mounted against the wall underneath a wall shelf, which is holding up two of his headphones. He's also using the Z88 mech keyboard with a Death Adder Elite gaming mouse. Now, I do like the fact that you custom built those speaker stands, but I think that if you painted them in white, it would have looked so much better in your setup. And the same goes for the top piece of that wall shelf. Also, is it common in the Netherlands to have the power outlet so high up on the wall? It's kind of weird that they do it that way if that's the case, because I feel like it's always going to be visible unless you cover it up somehow. Putting your PC in that bookshelf is a pretty clever idea since you don't have space on the desk, but at the same time, I feel like you're starving your PC from fresh air, which can lead to overheating problems, or at the very least, really high temps. A simple fix to this would be to remove the top shelf to kind of give your PC some more room to breathe, because right now it looks pretty suffocated. I don't have any complaints when it comes to cable management, however, if you want to hide that cable from the monitor and or the outlet, you can always use a wall raceway. You can even go a little extreme and put one of those wall raceways on the keyboard and mouse wire to cover it completely. I would say that this is a pretty good setup, but with some minor tweaks, you can really improve it further. Thank you, Jarek, for entering. Last but not least, we have Nico and his super clean gaming setup featuring the Linman tabletop. He's using the Logitech G610 with cherry red switches and the Logitech G403 mouse. For audio, he's using the Logitech Z333 speakers and the Corsair Void Pro headset, which is chilling next to his PS4. The setup is being powered by his ASUS laptop, which has an i5-7300 and a GTX 1050. Now, there's a few things you can do to improve this setup. For starters, installing a pencil drawer underneath the desk will help you store small items like the Nintendo DS's. An obvious headphone hanger would give you a place to hang your headset. And finally, you can use these racks to hold up both your PS4 controllers underneath the desk. I would say you did a good job with the cable management and the overall setup, but I feel like it's missing something. You know, the whole wall around the setup seems so empty. Maybe you can add some stuff to give the setup some life. Thank you, Nico, for entering. And that's it for this episode of Setup Wars. As always, make sure you guys vote in the comment section on who has the best desk setup. And make sure you guys are following me on my social media platforms for some pretty cool sneak peeks on upcoming projects.